Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, in today's video, we're going to be reviewing the Anycubic Photon S. Uh, this is their upgraded model, their original uh, Anycubic Photon, which I reviewed and did a teardown video a while back. We also upgraded the linear rails on that system that made the printer way better. So if you haven't checked that out, link in the description. In any case, I guess Anycubic saw that video, liked it enough to send me a free Photon S to review, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so let's get into it. First thing you notice is probably the green windows here. Uh, that's actually a pretty big upgrade. Uh, if you look at the original Photon, that blue plexiglass actually isn't very opaque to UV light, which basically means that if you leave your resin bath in there, in a well-lit room like this, after just a day or two, you're gonna see a film start to form on top of the resin, which is pretty nasty and it'll ruin your bath pretty quickly. Uh, this yellow-green stuff is actually quite a bit better. Uh, in fact, if you wanna know more about that, uh, Applied Science did a fantastic video kind of analyzing different materials and how transparent they are to UV light. Uh, so I'll link that down in the description as well. Uh, next thing you'll probably notice is that um, the outside, it's a little bigger, not by much, uh, but it's also made of plastic instead of the original metal. Um, now that may seem like a cheap choice, but honestly it's not bad. Um, the outside doesn't matter all that much, and with this design I think they were able to make it a little more light tight as well, which uh, helps with keeping your resin in good shape when you've got it in there. Uh, they did change the touch screen as well. Uh, it's not much bigger, but the interface is a lot better. The touch screen seems a bit more responsive in general, so that's an upgrade. But the biggest thing they changed on this is that linear rail system. If you watched the previous video we did on the Photon, that's pretty much what we focused on upgrading, and it made a big, big difference. So what do they do to the Photon S to make it better? Well, <laughs> they doubled up on the system they had, which has its pluses and minuses. It is quite a bit more rigid, uh, and it is producing better prints, spoiler alert. Uh, but I do have the same fear I have with the original, and that is they tend to start pretty tight and then uh, kind of loosen up after some time. So I suspect this is gonna do the same, probably not nearly as quickly as the original. I have been printing pretty much every day since I got the printer, which was about a week and a half ago, uh, and I haven't noticed any problems yet, so we'll see. Uh, the other thing that I noticed they changed is the surface finish on the build plate. The original was anodized, and you could tell it was kind of fresh off the mill. They had a kind of a a milled facing surface on it, uh, which at first glance you think, well, that, you know, that looks kind of cheap. You know, they didn't finish it and make it smooth. But it turns out those ridges actually contribute quite a bit to the adhesion of that first layer. And for the first four prints in a row that I did with this uh, new Photon S that has a nice flat ground surface, uh, they didn't stick. And I don't know if that's just a problem I'm having I did reach out to Anycubic and asked, and they gave me a few suggestions to check. Uh, I did check all those, and I was still having layer adhesion problems. So uh, we're gonna fix that in the video, you'll see that. Luckily, we have access to a mill and a fly cutter. If you don't, uh, I think probably some rough sandpaper would do a similar job, but that surface actually does need to be a little bit rough. You need to increase the surface area to have that, uh, that first layer really stick. So that's definitely a factor. Um, but let's actually take a look at some of the prints it's been doing. Um, are they better? Are they the same? Uh, is it a big upgrade if you have an original Photon? Let's take a look.
So after doing probably a dozen prints on this, um, I have to say, uh, there is very little difference between my upgraded Photon and the new Photon S, as far as the print quality is concerned. Uh, it is quite a bit better than the original Photon, so if you're upgrading from that, uh, a Photon S is a good upgrade. Uh, we also offer the upgrade kit that, uh, that you've seen in the previous video, so that's an option too if you want to keep your original printer. Um, but yeah, there's very, very little difference between the two. If I had to pick one particular printer that does better print quality, I'd have to pick our upgraded version. I'm sure I'm biased on this, but uh, it is just slightly more consistent. Uh, there are a few kind of um, artifacts of the new one, and I'm not sure. I haven't nailed down exactly what's causing it. The prints from the new printer are a little more glossy. Uh, I'm really not sure why that is. It does print a little quicker. It's one thing I forgot to mention. I think the default settings are eight seconds a layer, whereas the old one is 10 seconds a layer. So you do save some time there, but maybe that faster cure time is contributing to its glossiness. It's not worse or better, um, but it is a little different. You may also notice just a few inconsistencies in vertical layers on the new one, and that is because the system just isn't as rigid. Those linear rails that I'm using are, are kind of industrial and pretty strong, so. Uh, I think that's just what's contributing to the consistency of the print. The other thing that I've noticed is there are kind of these tiny little surface imperfections on the new print, the little little bubbles. Uh, they're really, really subtle. Like they probably show up a lot better on camera than you can see them in real life. And I think that may also have to do with just the quicker print. Uh, I imagine if I slowed it down, they would be pretty much identical. So that's potentially a factor. Uh, the other thing you may have noticed, I've been talking this whole time, sitting in front of the new printer while it's printing. It is way quieter than the original. Um, let me just give you a sample. New one's running right now. You can probably hear it go up and down every once in a while. Let me, let me just turn on the original. So I don't know how much of that is picking up on audio. Uh, in the room, it sounds like you got a pretty a uh, pretty noisy fan going on at all times. And that fan makes that noise whether you're printing or not, if you have it turned on. Uh, I'm not really sure why. Uh, they also have this pretty terribly annoying beep. It's good to let you know when the printer is done, but it is kind of loud. There are some internal differences to the new printer, and uh, if you guys want, I'll do a second video where I do a full teardown of it. Uh, I think the biggest thing they changed inside is the LED light array for the, the UV lights. The original has kind of one bright LED at the bottom. The new printer has an array of LEDs that are kind of more spread out over the LCD, so maybe you get more consistent prints over that area. I haven't ever found that to be a problem on the original printer, but it probably also contributes to its slightly faster cure time. Uh, the other thing I tested while I was printing, as long as I had the chance, is I uh, tested a bunch of different resins. So uh, I used the original Anycubic resin that was sent with the new printer. That's the prints in green. Uh, and it worked just as well as it ever has. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I think any cubic should probably supply a different color than the green. It really doesn't show off the detail on what this printer can do. Um, so maybe consider that any cubic. And give people some gray. I, I think that looks way better. I was also sent some uh, resin to review. This is made by a company called Sane Smart. Uh, this is the orange stuff that you see. Uh, and it works great. Same cure times as the original. Uh, the quality looks pretty good. It's a little lighter orange than uh, maybe you'd expect. Uh, but the quality seems fantastic, durability seems good. I'm going to be putting them on the upgrade for the Prusa printer I just got. Uh, so I'll give a bit more of a review on those parts and how they hold up a little later. Um, but my first impressions are that they're quite good. Um, like I said, this Made in America, it's a bit cheaper than most of the other stuff and comes in this nice aluminum can. So uh, I also tested out some of this Elegoo resin. Uh, Elegoo, I think, makes another printer very similar to the Anycubic. And this stuff is the ABS-like resin. So I think it's supposed to have a little bit more flexibility than most of the resin. Uh, and I haven't really been able to test that just yet. That's gonna take, I think, a bit more of a deep dive uh, and maybe we'll set up some test rigs to see just how much more flexible it is. Um, but I got it in both gray and clear. Um, the gray just looks beautiful. Uh, if you have one of these printers and you just wanna show off what kind of detail it is, get some gray resin. I've tried a few different kinds. Uh, this seems to work really well. Uh, you just can see every tiny little detail. Gray is a great choice. I also bought it in clear. Now, clear I've struggled with a bit uh, with this printer. I've tried a few different resins. They print fine, 
but they always come out with just a little bit of a yellow tinge, uh, and it doesn't look great. If they maybe added a tiny bit of blue dye in there, it'd maybe look a bit more like glass. Um, if you're doing thin parts, it works really, really well. Uh, it does look pretty clear. But if you're doing solid infill on some thicker parts, you can definitely see the color in there. And it, it's just, you know, yellow isn't a great look for clear plastic, in my opinion. Uh, but the detail is great. It seems durable, and it printed just fine. So, Okay, I think that wraps it up. I'm going to be printing with these printers for a little while longer, uh, and I'll give you some more detailed reviews if I run into any more issues. Uh, but overall, I know I'm probably getting a little bit picky and into the details about this stuff. Uh, really, from a user perspective, I think they're both great printers. I would definitely upgrade the original if you've got one, because um, that linear rail system just isn't great. You'll start to see these weird lines in vertical walls of the prints. Uh, I think really that is just that linear rail system loosening up over time. Uh, and I've noticed a huge, huge improvement on my printer for that. Um, but overall, if you're looking to buy a new Anycubic and you don't have either one of these, get the S for sure. It's really not much more expensive. Uh, and it prints really nicely. Uh, again, I don't know about its long-term durability as far as that linear rail system, uh, but so far it's been really good. Uh, the touch interface is nice. Uh, having it be fairly quiet is nice. Um, they added a few more filters in there, the carbon activated filters. Uh, it's really hard to tell in this room if those made a big improvement. Uh, I do have the old printer sitting right next to it. Sometimes it's got a resin bath in there, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so, you know, I, I can't tell if there's a difference in smell, uh, but that is something to keep an eye out for with resin printers in general. You want to be in a pretty well ventilated area. All right, that was a long way of saying the new Anycubic Photon S is pretty darn good. Uh, if you're in the market for a resin printer that has kind of a small build volume, um, highly recommend it. It is remarkably affordable and has been great so far. All right, guys, see you on the next one. I was hoping maybe we could have a little dialogue about that. All right, uh, Lewis says, the cat has seen enough. I don't know how everyone guessed it, but uh, the cat's name is actually the cat. No, seriously. Pest says, the erroneous apostrophe in the thumbnail is making my eye twitch. I literally made a joke about not being able to spell things in that video, and I hope you learn to expect less from us in the future. Kem C. Slow asks, uh, why would I use servos when I can use closed loop hybrid steppers? That's actually a really good question. Uh, hybrid steppers are great for a lot of things. Um, they can be a little bit cheaper and everything, especially if you get a good deal off of Banggood or something like that. Um, they are noisier. They have inherent vibration unless you're using something like the Trinamic drivers. Um, they also really can't match the RPMs of good servos, but in a lot of applications, none of that matters. And I'll probably use it on a different machine in the future. Cool. Frederick says, great stuff, but is Haas seriously the gold standard you're comparing to? That's actually a really good question. I mean, we don't want to give the impression that Haas is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but we do think them and Tormach are doing a pretty good job of catering to smaller shops. If you want to check out something a little more high-end, maybe DMG Mori or Mazak? Yeah, uh, if you want to see some really incredible stuff, maybe check out the video we linked to down in the whatever from NYCNC's tour of current Microtechnic. Uh, Reed First, oops, asks, uh, is there any kind of a reference output for the Z encoders? If so, could you use that as a super accurate homing for the machine? Actually, that is a great question. I just had a conversation with John about this the other day, and there is a way to do what's called hard stop homing with the clear path motors. Uh, and we're definitely going to do that in the future. But first, we're going to do conventional home switches because, well, we already did and our time travel stuff is down at the moment. But yes, to all these things. All right, uh, what do you know says, adults talking about motors, 454 with roots blower, Holly double pumper, TH800, transmission ROF9. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, 7M GTE, GT35R ball bearing, R154 in an A70. 625 foot-pounds. All right, uh, Walrus68000, great name, says, uh, please share your experience with a cheap Chinese VFD. Oh. Don't miss our next episode. Subscribe. Drewski5000 asks, uh, in a future build, would you consider building a plasma table? I wanted to make one of those before the CNC, but things happened. So I'm going to say that's our next machine, maybe. Who knows? You guys know how he is. 
Uh, Bosick says, Death Metal One Horn Doom Pony. XL, please. We're gonna have to make those shirts, aren't we? <laughs> 